research focused on building long-term relationships is pretty big. If you're, if you're into branding and you want to build long-term relationships, that was what my findings from all those papers said. If you were into PR, social media is still too young to produce much ROI. If you're into PR, you have a problem with these tools. Because if you sold your clients on these tools are going to produce ROI, you have a problem. Because they're too immature. They're not going to, for the most part, be able to do it today. There are some new developments, however. Peak View, the company I'm associated with in New York, is going to be supplying their data to some of the monitoring platforms. And that's going to help the influencer identification and tools like Radiant 6 improve. It will produce some more psychographic and demographic and geolocational data that will be matched in in the future. I think that's a very likely thing, and that will improve that part. So the tools will get better, but today I don't think you're going to get, if you're PR, you're not going to do it. If you're advertising, the research showed to focus on small and rich communities and supporting services that should be, uh, should be where you should concentrate. You should find communities. If you're into advertising, find rich communities and feed them. If you're sales, you have uh, the recession hurt you, <laughs> uh, but uh, you will probably have a bit of work here. If you're say sales, not because the social media isn't really about sales. So to use it for sales, you might be able to do it, but you're going to have a hard time. If you're marketing, you're a good storyteller. So if you can tell a good story, and you have a creative to go with it, and I would say that social media is going to help you. If your customer service, you'll have a good time because showing customer service uh, will translate into value, but the value might be not monetary. You know, it could be monetary, but like Dell could say, you know, six million dollars, whatever. But the, the, for the most part, your value will be reverse ROI. It will be the things you say, the business processes you optimize. Now that's money, but it's not the same money that you would have spent, and that's what people brought up. It's not the same money that you would have spent. It's money that you don't spend. That you can spend on something else. But it's not the money that you spend. And that's that's a big thing. Because people want to know that it is the money I would have spent. It's not. If you're CRM, you'll be looking for B2B and B2C. And they have different emphasis. B2B and B2C, B2B takes a long time to develop. Uh, and so the contact outreach is different those two segments, you'll be more looking, the buying part of it is different. If you're community management, reverse engineer what you need to reach, uh, you, you basically have to show the value of your outreach. If you're a community manager, that's what you have to do. You have to show that the work you do uh, is worth something. Like the, the people you outreach, you have to document that, so it's a lot of work. In terms of what works for segments, B2B, B2B customers tend to adopt social media, but C-level execs are waiting to see the hard proof from B2B case studies that they haven't seen. So there aren't any, really that many good B2B case studies. And so that seems to be the problem right now with B2B. They're just waiting to see enough. They want to. It just isn't that much good data right now out there to support it. So a lot of them are waiting. As of August, who knows, maybe. There's a company called Mercado that automates B2B reach in sales campaigns. It seems to have a very useful tool. There are people coming up with tools to do this, but still. What works for B2C? Demand-based messaging doesn't work, but if, you, if your messaging is crisp, if it's good, it, it might work. If you have good graphics and, and, and good messaging, it might work. Then what works to achieve, now if we're looking at states of awareness, like awareness versus consideration, what works for awareness, start by creating content and sharing it. That, that creates awareness. Create content and share it. What works for consideration, moving from awareness, their customers are no longer buying based on classic funnel. So the first thing they do is research on the internet and use word of mouth and asking opinions from their friends. So if you want to move people from awareness to consideration, you need to have a lot of product reviews. You need to have a lot of recommendations that people see because they're doing their research on Google. They're doing their research.
to search on radio sites. So you need to be on radio sites and putting good content out there. If you want to get them from awareness to, that's what works. If you want to motivate a customer to try something, to move from consideration to trying, you, to move people, you should have several positive reviews. Again, you need reviews. So you need, you need people to be saying really positive stuff about your stuff that they can read, that it's out there. And that, that will help. And if it gets ranked in search engines, that will help with the next. So if you do some keyword research ahead of time and do some optimization, you might actually have fun and get some people to link to it. You might actually do very well. What? OK. Anyway, to, to sum up, there's a couple more things like that uh, that I have. Um, I don't know that I have the time to do the rest of this. So I will say that geolocation services like Foursquare are still considered too immature for ROI. And uh, basically that's, you know, the rest of this will be in my book, which you'll read next year. I mean, so, <laughs> like I said, I mean, if you want to know more, I'll try to do a post to it. But I think what I'd like to do is any one question, and we have a time for one or two questions. We have one or two questions? OK. Uh, anyone? How much is your paper? What? How much is your paper? Uh, I can't say. <laughs> okay. No. Are you interested? <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, this, this is my question. Say there's no ROI, I can understand. You're arguing for that and the fact Well, I, I'm arguing for the fact that given the current state of tools and methodologies, that's largely correct. It's right. possible to do a closed loop circuit, but you'd have to instrument it. Well, that's, I guess that's what's going to be my question in terms of uh, instrumenting it. If you have a viral marketing campaign, mm -hmm. which is proactive and very deliberate, can you not digitally trace the outcome of that? You can, and there are tools that are evolving. Like, uh, I tested one um, recently on my blog, and I got a 20% viral lift from, from, from it. Um, I don't remember the name of it, but they'll, 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 they'll murder me for not ever remembering. But uh, it works with Facebook, and uh, it does measure like it creates a landing page for you, and it does measure that if your friends also share it, and people have gotten lifts. So the technology exists, but, but right now it doesn't go across all the social media channels, but that is evolving, I would expect, next year. Uh, and also, Viral Heat, a cheap tool, incidentally, does actually say that they track viral video, which is something that Radiant 6 and some of the others don't do, which is interesting. Uh, the mix is interesting. It's not only about the price, it's about the new features. And anyone else on the last one? Where did you get the term reverse ROI from? It came to my head when I was listening to you. <laughs> right in New York. Because reverse ROI is most of the time what the money was. It was money saved. It wasn't money made. It was money made because you didn't spend it. It wasn't money that you got extra. And, and that's generally what social media ROI is today. It's reverse ROI. Sorry, uh, you said geosocial championship for ROI. What do you mean by that? Sorry. What? You just said geosocial, like geolocation. Yeah, geolocation is kind of like, in other words, right now, the studies I have looked at in August and September, basically, we're looking to see if we could, say, use Foursquare and even Facebook places for like campaigns at district levels to track people or get, or even to reward them if, if it's geofencing and they're going into a neighborhood and then they get all these deals and then they go over there. Right now, the problem is only like 4% of the US population is on these things. And I, I bet over here, there's probably less than 1%. It's just not enough people yet. Um, when I was here uh, last time in, in March and April, you know, I was walking around bathroom places and like nobody even hardly heard of these services, you know. So I mean, while you guys are way ahead and the Koreans are way ahead in using their mobile phones, they're way behind in using geolocation. And so 